All of the alternatives aside from Christ cannot satisfy our souls. And so there's this spiritual appetite. We prepare to come for the Lord's, to the Lord's Supper. We come to the Supper hungry. We come to the Supper thirsty. We see our lack. We see our emptiness. We see our neediness. And we crave more grace. This is our spiritual appetite. And then there are times even when though the root of the matter is there, our spiritual appetite, the exercise of that appetite is waning. Think back to our study, our lengthy study of the Song of Songs. Remember that portion in chapter 5. Christ is coming to the door to sup with his bride, with us. And she basically yawns and rolls over says, I have no interest, in essence. There's a lethargy which sticking fast to her soul. She lost her desire. What does that tell us about ourselves when there is a lack of desire for Christ and his grace? Well, what does it tell us about ourselves physically? If we lose our appetite, we know this is a sign that all is not well. I'm sick. Something's wrong with me. If I'm not hungry, which would be normal, I'm I've got to be coming down with something. And so it's the same spiritually, very, very much the same. You know, we look at ourselves and say, I'm not really hungry and thirsty for Christ to the degree that I should be or like I have been on other occasions. And it's a sign, isn't it? Something's not right. There's a spiritual sickness there. And yet, the Lord provides the nourishment for spiritual health and strength through the very means that we don't have an appetite for. You know, did your mother ever tell you, even though you're not, you have to eat even though you're not hungry, or you have to drink this water even though you're not thirsty, because that's one of the means that's going to help you get better or recover? And it's the same. The Lord's people come to the provisions that God himself gives we can't say no appetite, therefore I'll neglect the provision. It would be suicide. The provision is the cure to the malady. And therefore we come to feed, praying that in our feeding, the Lord will increase our hunger and thereby increase our feeding all the more. This kind of hunger, this spiritual hunger, this hunger for God himself, is a mercy. It is a blessing. It is happiness. The fact is, we want the whole world to be hungry with this kind of hunger. We want all of Greenville, South Carolina to be hungry for God. The thing that drives us stark raving crazy is their profound lack of hunger for Christ. You know, you can stand on the street and in the preaching of the gospel, offer them the most scrumptious, the most scrumptious feast conceivable. And the nearly unanimous response is, no thanks. I'm not hungry. No appetite for such things. You know what this is like. My, how often has my wife said, did you, did you eat lunch? No, I, I wasn't hungry. Right? This is the nature of, of lost mankind. We desire, pray God, that through the irresistible work of the Holy Spirit, which is the only means by which this spiritual hunger can be imparted, that God would make them hungry. And we should pray the same for ourselves. When the Catechism talks about stirring up the grace that is within us in preparation for the Lord's Supper, it's saying, Lord, help through prayer, through the preparatory service in the public assembly, through preaching, through my reading, and so on, grant that all of these things would increase my spiritual appetite, that I would come to the table wanting more grace, more holiness, more love, more fruit of the Holy Spirit, more of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ.